Hi friends, and welcome to another episode of Strange Times Poetry Broadcast. I'm coming to you live from the Poetry Bookshelf to read you three uplifting poems. Um, if you haven't joined us before, it's one by a famous author, one by a friend, and one by myself. And if you haven't already, please like our Facebook page so that you'll know when we're broadcasting every night at 8. I'm excited for you to join us. Um, so the poems that I'm going to be reading tonight, I've, I've assigned them the theme of um, In the Aftermath of Fire. It's actually from a line from one of the poets that I'm going to be reading tonight, Kyle Dargon. And I think all of these poems deal with hope in the face of a difficult situation, you know, getting it right on the second try, um, that sort of thing. Um, so the first poem I'm going to read is by Kyle Dargan, and um, this is one of my one of my favorite poems of his, and it's called "The State of the Union." And this poem is from his book Honest Engine, which was published by the University of Georgia Press. You should definitely check it out. State of the Union. I live in a land called East of the River, five miles from the U.S. Capitol, where air airspace must still be policed, no fly zone. Tonight, a helicopter freezes into a shallow star blinking above my house, while the men and women of government herd themselves inside the Senate chambers. Our commander-in-chief and all his cabinet save one, traditionally one, who is excluded and tasked with waiting to resurrect our country should Iran, Russia, China, or what's left of Iraq try to bowl a ballistic 710 split, toppling the monument and capital. Tonight, it's the agriculture secretary's duty to save us. It should always be our agriculture secretary. In times of crisis, a country needs before commerce or war or law to eat. And if Congress allowed the appointment of an agriculture secretary who can't grow a pea, might we not deserve oblivion? I prefer to imagine our Secretary of Agriculture hunkered in his undisclosed location, listening to the speech on battery-powered radio, sifting seed through his dusty palms, deciding what must grow first in the aftermath of fire. Yeah, that question, what must grow first in the aftermath of fire and imagining that the agriculture, or the Secretary of Agriculture will save us all um, just by planting. All right, my next poem is by Allie Pierce, who was a classmate of mine at UMass Boston, and a lot of her poems deal with science, outer space, and her most recent book is The Visible Planets, which you can order from Game Over Books. I put all of the uh, information in the description. Um, and this poem is Im imagining what the Hubble telescope would write to its follow-up, the James Webb. At first, be a blunder. Be a disappointment. Fool them. Make them think you know different than a space rock filled with diamonds. Make them puzzle over you. Give them the gift of problem solving. Let them generate the feat of human engineering that fixes you. Then tell them what they want to hear in all its wispy pinprick detail. Let them be amazed, marvel at the least you can do. If they ask for the beginning, tell them it's possible, but they'll have to conjure it, to sit at your feet and pray long enough in the night numerical combinations. Make, make them sweat and then drop the cloak of darkness from the universe's shoulders. Reveal to them their secrets, that everyone has children even if we don't know them, that everyone orbits, that shadows lurk under ice, that even emptiness has a name and pulls us, that stars mock the shape of all our faces. When you are more than they have ever dreamt, keep clicking. Show them you are just getting started. It will be like magic for them, better than God explaining. You can show them millions of years of proof of ghosts. You can display almost impenetrable deaths and what crawls there. 
you can whisper to them their only great hope, that they might not be alone, that one morning they will wake up to an image of a hand waving hello. I love the idea of it being a blunder and a disappointment at first and how that kind of fools people into thinking maybe it doesn't work, but then the least you can do is amazing. And how the telescope sort of grows into itself and, yeah, brings news that we're not alone. Um, I just find this poem so full of hope. And I love how, like you know, just like the State of the Union where it's like catastrophe, but what comes out of it is the Secretary of Agriculture planting the seed. Here, the mistakes and the sort of inexperience eventually bring marvel and wonder. All right, and I was inspired by Allie's science poem to read a sciencey poem. Uh, tonight, that was based on an experiment done with these plants called sensitive plants or mimosa pudica where if you touch their leaves normally the plant will will close its leaves but um, some scientists did an experiment to see if um, a plant if the plant could remember whatever it means to remember as a plant that you know that that touch wasn't a big deal and that the plant would stay open um, and so this poem is about a little bit about my um, you know, finding this plant in lots of places and also about this experiment of can you be taught to remember that something's going to be okay. Mimosa Pudica. To touch what doesn't want. You're grown as a curiosity, slender green leaves snapping shut. I met you wild, curious for the soil, spiraling over twice chewed grass. Not an experiment. A potted plant spiraling to the ground like shuttle junk. Someone's idea of teaching grass not to forget, but remain rent on the ground. Sometimes not forgetting is both, well, the plant is both rent on the ground, but it's also still open. Thank you for joining me tonight. I was so glad to read poetry with you. Um, Please stay safe, stay sane, and good night. Bye!